They're going through this buyer's journey, whether you hold their hand or not. If your lead magnet fails at either of these, it just fails. First thing we need to do is figure out what is the part of the buyer's journey we're entering. How can I be very specific and call out my audience, priming them to purchase? Hey team, how are you going today? For anyone that's new to my channel, my name's Alicia conlin Heard. I'm the co-founder of Persuasion Experience and I've crafted and launched over 450 different landing pages and funnels in my career. So today we're gonna get started with what even is a lead magnet. And typically a lead magnet is an offer or an opt-in bribe to get somebody to come onto your email list. So it's an exchange of valuable information. You're providing a valuable piece of content and in exchange, they're giving some of their contact details. They're a really low barrier to entry. So instead of going to them and asking for marriage on the first date or trying to get them to get on a phone call or on a sales call or to buy straight away, they're a really nice smooth way to start a conversation earlier in the buyer's journey with your lead or prospect for a specific market in exchange for their details. But why should you care about a lead magnet? Well, without a lead magnet, most businesses are just going after in-market leads meaning all they're doing is trying to attract people who are ready to buy now. But people don't wake up one day just wanting to magically buy what you're offering. They go through something called the buyer's journey. And by having really, really good lead magnets, pieces of content or other information that's not just driving people to become a lead or a sale right now, you start to widen your ecosystem and widen your net of the types of people you're talking to. And as I said, they're going through this buyer's journey, whether you hold their hand or not. And so if you can create pieces of content or lead magnets that help them to bounce down the buyer's journey, you're going to become that authoritative, trusted business or person that helped them to get there. And they're going to trust you when it comes time to buy. So as an example, at the moment, I'm showing you a client called Brico. So they're a jewelry insurance company in the state and people go through a journey before they want to buy jewelry insurance. They don't wake up one day and decide that they want jewelry insurance. So with this client, we're doing a quiz on how to figure out how to buy your perfect engagement ring. Most of their customers buy insurance for engagement rings. So how can we find them earlier in the journey, help them to solve a problem earlier in the journey and become a trusted authoritative and become a trusted friend throughout that process that helped them to get to that answer. So when they inevitably come up to having to get insurance for their ring or start thinking about it, they think of us because we've already started the relationship earlier in the journey. So a quiz is a certain type of lead magnet that you can use. And that's just one of many that I'm going to be showing you today. So before we get started into the step-by-step -step of how you create your lead magnet, there's two things that are really important for you to understand. And that's the two primary objectives of a great lead magnet. Because when we're creating things, there's no point just creating them for the sake of creating them. We have to remember what is the intent and what is the purpose of the thing that we are creating. So a great lead magnet accomplishes these two things above everything else. It attracts the right people and it positions these people to purchase. If your lead magnet fails at either of these, it just fails, full stop. So I'm showing another client example on the screen now called Raffle. Raffle is an online raffle competition company over in the UK. And earlier in the journey, we wanted to start tapping into a new target market of influencers. So they were getting influencers, but we wanted to figure out a way that we could attract these earlier in the journey. So we have a very specific promise here of three easy ways UK influencers can make money on social media today. So you can see here, we're gonna be attracting the right people. Raffle is only for like people in the UK and we're also calling out influencers and the number one burning question they're having, which is how to monetize their following. Most influencers or people with a following cannot figure out how to turn that into money. They've got all of the fans and they have no idea how to monetize it. So that is tapping in to that problem they're having. Then we have what they're gonna get out of it. We have more proof. We show them why they want it and we give some scarcity to download it. Then in the lead magnet, in the actual thing that's delivered on, we start to prime them for the purchase. We start to position Raffle as one of those solutions 
to monetizing your following. Great lead magnets, make a specific promise, give a specific example, offer a specific shortcut, answer a specific question, or deliver a specific discount. Now, the moment that you've been waiting for, this is the step-by-step -step process of how we actually create these lead magnets for our clients. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what is the part of the buyer's journey we're entering. So we understand the conversation in the mind of the lead or the prospect that we're entering and matching the temperature of traffic. When we say matching the temperature, temperature of traffic, what I mean is the temperature of traffic on TikTok organic is very different to the temperature of in-market leads on Google ads. So you need to make sure that you're matching the conversation in their mind. And by using those five stages by Eugene Schwartz, you can start to map those out from unaware all the way to most aware. And you can think about the buyer's journey that somebody takes before they're actually ready to purchase from you and start creating lead magnets and content that help them along that journey. So for example, if they're problem aware, you want to create content that matches that conversation, like how to fix X or symptoms of Y, because they're problem aware. They've just figured out their problem, but they're not sure that there's a solution for that problem yet. But if they're most aware, so some of those in market leads, that's when you would be giving things like downloadable discounts or vouchers or things that are for hyperactive buyers. So once you've figured that out, then you'll start to know the number one burning question, pain point or gain point you want to go after. So most of the time with lead magnets, we tend to move towards pain because that does activate people better and figure out what is that number one burning question that they have. And you can only figure this out if you truly know your target market. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I really, really believe that marketing is just inputs and outputs, garbage in, garbage out. And that number one input that you're going to have is understanding your target market. So when you truly understand who your target market is, that's like doing your marketing on easy mode. And the reason why a lot of people feel friction in their marketing, they don't know what to do and they don't know how to improve it and they don't know what to test is because they just don't understand their target market. Because at the end of the day, every business just exists to solve problems and to serve people. And if you don't understand those people, that's when your marketing becomes really hard hard. Once you decide what is that number one burning question, what is the gain point or what is the pain point, then you need to make sure that you have specificity in your lead magnet. For example, there's a really big difference between podcasting 101 and five easy steps to start a podcast about cat. Very, very different. More specificity calls out the person. Podcasting 101 is very generic and doesn't promise anything. So you want to be thinking about based on that number one burning question that I'm trying to address or the number one pain point or gain point, how can I be very specific and call out my audience and then also be priming them to purchase? Remembering those are the two objectives of this lead magnet. We're not just creating this for the lols. We're creating this because it's going to serve a business objective. So once you understand that and you understand what you want to tap into in the target market, the next thing to figure out or step number three is is, is this going to stand out from the noise? So you want to see what else is out there, what's on Amazon books, what's on YouTube, what's on page one of Google, and you want to see what your competitors are doing because you want to make sure that this is going to stand out from the noise. There is so much garbage out there on the internet now, and people have seen hundreds, if not thousands of lead magnets, and most of them are really crappy. So a really good way to do this is to make something that your competitors are probably too lazy to make. And one way that we do this with our clients is by teaming up with industry experts. It takes a little bit longer, but you get contributors. It actually is a little bit easier because you just choose the structure of your chapter and then you can start to make strategic partnerships to create that piece. Now, why is this an awesome option? One, because you have like you're co-creating the actual lead magnet and two, then you can tap into their authority and their networks when you are distributing the ebook or the lead magnet. So here's an example that we made with a client called Wayflyer and Wayflyer does e-commerce funding and we teamed up with six different experts to help e-commerce stores achieve their big goals. So e-commerce owners are typically really, really into upskilling and learning hacks and tactics and ways to fast track their growth. So we teamed up with the best in the business. Some of these were contacts we already had. Some of these were contacts that Wayflyer had and we got them to all contribute a chapter on six big levers when it comes to e-commerce growth. Now, the thing is, 
Five of these people are external experts. The sixth is the CEO of the company. Remembering content with intent. Why are we doing this? And so this was that we could provide something super valuable with all of these experts in it, but also position and prime people to purchase in the future. So a page like this has a super, super high conversion rate. But remember that you usually need a funnel on the back end to nurture those leads. So when it comes to finance or funding, it does take a bit of time for somebody to become a highly qualified, highly motivated lead. So when you're bringing in things to the top of the funnel, you need to remember that relentless follow-up and nurturing on the back end that you can automate with a funnel. Once you know these things, step four is to decide the vehicle that the lead magnet is going to be in. So one important thing to remember is that lead magnet does not equal ebook. It does not need to be an ebook. Now, sometimes that is the most valuable thing. But if you think about what is the normal user journey, people don't really read PDFs and do these things. So can you do something else like spreadsheet template or can you do a video training? There's a lot of other ways that you can create a lead magnet and it doesn't need to be an ebook. Think about your target market. Think about what they use and what happens in their day to day and what's going to be the most valuable and the easiest thing for them. But some examples of different types of lead magnets can be white papers, quizzes, coupons or discounts, ebooks, video series, masterclasses, access to databases, free trials, case studies, webinars, educational courses, free software tool. Anything like this can be considered a lead magnet, top of funnel to bring them in and to nurture them. Okay, step number five, create minimum viable. This is one of the biggest mistakes I see people make, and that is that they try and make it perfect. They put all this work in and they don't get speed to market to launch this piece of content. Now, yes, it, you need it to be awesome. It needs to be valuable and you need to be putting thought and care into it, but you can't be sitting on it and trying to get it done over a month, three months, six months, a year, because then you've lost your first mover advantage to market. And sometimes these can be timely. Maybe they're not an evergreen asset. Maybe Maybe you need to launch it quickly. So you need to think, how can you launch this minimum viable? So don't get caught up in perfection. And remember, you could launch it and no one wants it. Maybe you got the messaging wrong. Maybe you got the strategy wrong. So you can make it perfect based on the target market feedback that you get. And finally, step six. So what will happen is you'll create your lead magnet. Then you'll create an opt-in page. And this opt-in page needs to be high converting. Just remember, a funnel is every single step that somebody has with you. And so the first touch point they're going to have is the ad or the thing that gets the click. The next is going to be the opt-in page and what actually converts them to download the ebook or the lead magnet or the white paper or the video series or the quiz, whatever it is that you choose. You need to have a high converting opt-in because there's nothing more frustrating than when you create this beautiful, magnificent lead magnet and then nobody downloads it. So if you're not putting it out there in its best light, you're not going to get the results that you want. With an opt-in page, you need to remember what are you selling on that page you're not selling the company you're not selling a sales call you're not trying to get them to buy at that point in time you need to remember what do they want to hear and what do they need to hear on this opt-in page you're entering the conversation and there's probably a lot of things going on that you know they need to hear or they need to be educated on but that comes in the lead magnet itself on the opt-in page you are selling the download or the watching or whatever action you want them to take so don't overwhelm them. Don't try and sell too much on here. Just get them to take action on this opt-in page. So as an example, you might have some scarcity with the countdown timer. You can call them out in the eyebrow. You can have an easy to read headline that tells them what it is and the value that they're going to get out of it as well. And then a clear call to action, some bullets on what they're going to get, some social proof on why they should trust you and then get them to download. It's as simple as that. Now, once you get the opt-in, which was number six, number seven is make sure you do something with the leads. So you've done all of this work now. What I see a lot of people fail on is they don't have this relentless follow-up in the back end. They get the lead, they get the email address, and then they might send out a, here's your content, but then they forget that maybe the purchase time or the lead to sale time is three weeks, 
six months, 12 months, 18 months. It depends what industry you're in, which means you need to have that email journey and that buyer's journey planned out on the back end. Okay, before we wrap up, I wanna quickly go through what are all of the things people get wrong. Now, you know what a lead magnet is, why you should care and how you should create one. Here's a bit of a checklist that you can have to self audit to make sure you don't make one of these mistakes. So number one, they focus on creation and not on distribution. When you are creating this, you don't want to put all of your time and effort into creation that you have nothing left for distribution. If all you're doing is focusing on making it and not on getting it into the hands of people, it's going to fail. It's not going to work. And then you're going to go, oh, that lead magnet doesn't work. No, that's not how it works. You need to be spending about 80% of your time on distribution, create once and distribute forever. Number two is they have a weak opt-in page. So we've gone over that now. Headline, have either a video or an image that complements the text and shows them what they're going to get. Make sure you're just selling them on the download or taking action on the opt-in, not selling them on your company and all of these things that you do. At that point in time, you need to remember the conversation that you're entering and it's what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. Lead Magnet educates on what they need to hear. Number three is it's gated when it shouldn't be. So you need to test out gated versus ungated. And it kind of depends on the goals as a company and how valuable the piece of content is. But if it's just a blog post, probably have that ungated. If it's a really, really valuable mini course have that gated it just depends on the perceived value versus what you're asking them to take number four is they have content without intent so i've said this a few times throughout the video you can't just create a lead magnet and forget what is the purpose of your actually creating it marketing exists to serve the objectives of the business marketing exists to facilitate predictable scalable growth so if you're creating a lead magnet and it's not attracting the right people and it's not reframing them to want to actually purchase in the future, then you haven't done it right and you need to revisit your strategy. Number five is a generic promise that goes out to a generic audience. You're going to be bringing in the wrong type of people. Number six is an intriguing promise with a high conversion rate, but it brings in the wrong people, which is useless for the company. It doesn't matter if you've got a huge conversion rate and none of them are ever going to buy. Number seven, and I see this a lot, is weak content that doesn't deliver on the promise. You can't get somebody to download and your first interaction with them is underwhelming and your first interaction with them is you've overpromised and underdelivered. that's never going to set the company up for success and number eight it solves a problem but it's not an urgent one so you need to figure out back in those earlier steps are you going after a painkiller or a vitamin so a painkiller is like a bleeding neck problem they need it fixed right now versus a vitamin which is like a nice to have yeah maybe i'll read that one day Alrighty, team there you have it that is today's video on how to create high converting lead magnets with some client examples please let me know in the comments what did you think have you got a lead magnet up and running at the moment you want me to check out and give you some feedback chuck it in the comments otherwise thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed today's video please make sure that you like and subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified of future marketing videos that i release have an awesome day thank you so much for watching